Everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about what excess water and excess humidity can do to our figs. Um, not just the tree itself, but also the fruit as well. Um, not too long ago, though, we did a video on irrigating the figs, and that's different than this video because irrigating the figs is talking about getting the, the water at the soil level. In this video, I want to mention, because it's been raining here so much, is that I want to talk about what the rain on the top of the plant does to the, the tree itself. Um, so I guess we could start off by saying that in that prior video, for those of you guys who missed it on irrigating, is that any water in excess of just keeping these trees happy and healthy, any water more than that is going to reduce the quality of the fruits. It's going to reduce the sugar content, the flavor, and the bricks. And you can see over here some brabas that are ripening right now. And not only will that water at the soil level reduce the quality of the fruits, but it could also split them if we have too much water at the soil level. Because what happens is the tree uptakes water through its roots. It goes up the, the trunk, up through the, the stems, the branches, and then gets released through these leaves. And some of that water along the way, if there's too much of it, actually gets stored in these figs. And you can see I've got them, some of them wrapped around with organza bags. That's to help them protect them from critters, birds, insects. Uh, it does a pretty nice job. But what I've been doing is I took off some of the bags to inspect these fruits very carefully and very closely to see if they're splitting. Because if they are indeed splitting, um, that occurs essentially when there's too much water at the soil level or too much water or too much humidity at the top of the plant hitting the figs because when that water is trying to escape the leaves, if that water has nowhere to go, as an example, it's just really humid out, it's really raining out, um, the, fig, the water has to leave the fig somewhere and it's gonna leave from the fig itself. And that causes that pressure to change and it splits. And when the fig splits, you have a pretty big issue here because now the fig is exposed to the elements. It has a higher chance of fermenting, of spoiling, of perhaps even molding. And then you also have insects that could be in your area like fruit flies, the spotted wing drosophilia here, loves soft flesh fruit. And will certainly go after those, those figs and uh, even spoil it even further. <laughs> it's not a pretty sight, it's not something you wanna taste. Um, so what I've been doing here, because it's been raining since Monday, I think Monday was a pretty nice day. Now it's Friday, and ever since Monday it's been raining. Today's June 21st. We've had probably over the course of those four days this week, or three days this week, probably at like three, or, three inches or so of rain, uh, which is really not uncommon <laughs> to find here. And this, why it presents such a challenge with growing figs is that you end up seeing a lot of them split, a lot of them spoil, and also the quality just decreases. So what I've been doing is normally I have to come out here and pick off some Brava or pick off some figs prematurely. Pick them before the rains come in. And that's exactly what I did yesterday on this Coldenon Blanc. It had, or this Coldenon Blanc and Negra. It had rained quite a bit. And I was looking at the figs very closely. You can see the stem down here is still attached to the plant. Um, so you can see where the Brava was picked, but essentially the rain got to the skin of the fig. Now there's a difference between something that is split resistant and something that is rain resistant, at least in my opinion, in that you could have a fig that splits very easily, which I would consider my LSU Scott's Black, this tree here, to not be very split resistant. It splits quite often um, in many people's yards. So far, I've seen none of them on here split, which is a really good sign. We're gonna to get to why that is in just a moment, but the skin on the fig is really conducive to rain. It doesn't absorb that rain. It doesn't ruin the quality of the skin, um, which then if the rain or the water were to get to the interior of the fig, the pulp, you're almost guaranteed to ruin the flavor. Whereas on my fig over here, this Coldenon Blanca Negra has certainly been messed with by the rain. Um, I, didn't show, I didn't get a chance to get that one on video for you guys, but you have to take my word for it that the skin was really not looking good. And if I would have left it out for another day, 
for another downpour and then the rain that came in last night a steady rain that was in here last night um it would have gotten moldy i'm sure it would have it would have spoiled i'm sure and i would have had no fig at all so you know picking a fig early is better than having no figs but that's what i'm growing my fruit for here guys is that uh, I'm growing all this fruit because I don't want to get it from the store. The store, most of the fruits, they're picked early, they're not as good, they're of less quality, less flavor, less sugar content, less bricks. So why am I doing the same thing here in my climate where I put a lot of time and effort into this? Picking my figs at the most optimal time is really important to me. So, you know, it, it has to be done. It's a necessary evil, I guess, but uh, you know, it's not something you would want to deal with. So let me give you guys another point here that I want to make is that why do these figs split? Uh, we talked about that, but what is contributing to that is of course the humidity and the rain hitting these leaves. The humidity has nowhere to go. It's just sitting here on the leaves. It's uptaking lots of water. So what I'm, what I've been experiencing so far is that I haven't had to water any of these trees, any of these potted trees. I certainly haven't watered any of the in-ground trees. Um, that's a nice little bonus here in this climate. You know, some of you guys are looking at me like, holy crap, that's amazing. It's already June 21st. My first, my average last frost is May 1st. So I've had roughly a month and 20 days or so of frost-free days and I haven't had a water once. So, you know, that's nice, but also, uh, what that means is it's been pretty rainy here, but also in the in the more, more recent times these pots have been a bit more dry They've been on the drier side. What we want to do is keep the soil in the pots keep the soil at the soil level <laughs> You want to keep that not wet not dry, but moist and I think in the fig trees case Specifically, it's better off on the drier side of moist and I think that's where my trees were I think I had hooked up my irrigation for what? I don't know, but I hooked it up, <laughs> got it all in place, got it all set up, ready to be watering them, thinking that some of these trees would start to droop a little bit, start to look a little bit worse, and that didn't happen. So, but I know for sure that before this rain event came in, this Tuesday after Monday, um, the pots were on the drier side. And I think because they were on the drier side, there weren't, they weren't taking up so much water and as a result, now that the soil is certainly on the more wet side, more on the more moist side, um, they're not splitting. And I think that has a lot to do with it. So what I've been doing here and trying to do this year is I've been getting these trash bags, these heavy duty trash bags. Basically we wrap them around the sides of the pot and then you can tie this up around the branches and that will prevent a lot of the rain from entering the soil. You can 100% control the amount of water. So if we're getting a huge rain event that's gonna come in, I can look at the forecast ahead of time and say, oh, there's gonna be a big rain coming in maybe about four or five days ahead and pretty much assume that, oh, I should probably keep my pots on the drier side. That way when the rains do come in, I don't have to be watering them, number one, but number two, um, the soil's all ready to go. You know, and, and it's gonna prevent that splitting. We're not gonna have an issue with too much water at the soil level, which then of course is then causing those figs to split. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna have the best success, I'm sure, but it's gonna be something. I mean, and I've certainly noticed so far that has been the key to keeping our figs at a higher quality is really preventing that water. Ideally, all these figs should be grown under cover. I should have a nice little hoop house over every single one of these because of how much rain we get. Uh, but if I can control at least the moisture at the soil level, I think that's a big bonus. The only thing that I've been running into here with these trash bags is that after a rain, the water is collecting on the top of this. And I've actually untied this because I need to get the water off the top. If the water sits here, it's standing water for too long, we attract mosquitoes. And we've already got plenty of mosquito issues here. so. That's not something I wanna encourage, but that's kinda of what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is that um, our figs are certainly gonna be at lesser quality. The other thing to watch out for is the tree itself. And you can see there's already, there's still water on these leaves. There's been water on these leaves for pretty much an entire day. I've been out here 
yesterday morning and now this morning it's the same thing is that if there's too much water on these leaves for too long at the wrong time of the year you can get rust and rust is a disease that will spread with excess humidity excess moisture a lot of you guys in the humid southeast of the united states have this way worse than i do um, and you can help prevent this by picking up leaves that are infected and disposing of them um, also adding silica supplements and also you could use a fungicide like copper uh, and to be honest with you it's not the biggest of deals but if you guys live in a really humid place you have your trees really close together there's a dense spacing here there's not good airflow these leaves don't dry quick enough um, you can get rust and of course they can then defoliate if it gets bad enough you can actually defoliate your entire tree and that's of course really bad for when your trees are actually producing fruit or have fruit on them that hasn't ripened um, so that's kind of the deal here with the rain guys with the excess moisture when it comes to the tree but also to the fruits itself and what we need to watch out for some tips just different things i recommend and uh, hopefully i don't have to be out here picking my bravas early anymore i think the rain should be done for at least a short time and maybe next week it'll pick up again but at least in the near future these brava should be okay and i can pick them at close to the optimal ripeness if not the optimal ripeness um, all right everyone thank you for watching this one if you enjoyed it please give us a thumbs up subscribe and share this with somebody who is growing figs, you know somebody who's growing figs, um, help support the channel by showing them this video. All right guys, take care, and again, we'll talk to you soon. See you for tomorrow's video.